Hey YouTubers, Gwenda here. Uh, I wanted to bring you a message tonight called The Body, the Mind, and the Spirit. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm doing this message in response to a number of email questions that I have received, uh, basically saying, okay, I'm saved, why am I still having to struggle with this sin? Uh, I'm going to attempt to answer that question here. Um, when you get saved, <clears throat> it is the spirit part of you that is reborn. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, your body, your flesh body, and your soul, which is basically your mind, your will, and your, and your emotions, are not changed. It is only your spirit that is changed. Um, the body, the flesh body, you basically have to discipline it into obeying God's Word. Um, the soul, the mind, will, and emotions, um, you want to constantly have the Word of God going in your ears, your eyes, uh, speak it out of your mouth. That is what will change your mind, your will, and your emotions. That is what renews the mind is the water of the Word. Uh, you wash it with the water of the Word, and that's how you get it to line up with uh, everything else and be as saved as your spirit is. Um, none of us will ever be perfect till Jesus comes back to get us, but we do the best that we can. Um, so, uh, we know that we have authority over sin, because Luke ten nineteen, and this was Jesus speaking, uh, to the disciples said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Uh, and as well, Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that right there confirms um, that the spirit is following one line of thought, and the flesh is trying to do a whole different thing. And this is the age-old fight between good and evil. And it will struggle within you until Jesus comes back. Uh, but the good news is, as you spend more time in God's presence, as you seek the face of God, um, pray if the Lord leads you too fast, um, your flesh will begin to get delivered of a lot of the sin that you've been in. Now, you, you know, the Lord may still have to deal with you about things like, you know, thoughts or, <clears throat> or your words or, you know, whatever. Everybody has uh, different areas of struggle. So, um, the thing that you need to do is, you know, like Hebrews 4.16 says, you know, go, bolt, go boldly before the throne of grace to get help when you need it. And keep going through before the throne. Just continue to go back and ask and ask and ask because the Lord sees that you really want help with something. And He will answer. And, you know, He may not answer right away. He may want you to seek Him and pursue Him. He, he may be waiting on you to take a step that you haven't taken yet. Maybe you're not really resisting the sin. You know, maybe you're not really fleeing the temptation. Maybe you're going into the land of temptation and saying, Oh, Lord, deliver me, deliver me. Let me tell you something. If you are an alcoholic and you got saved and you are trying to not drink, don't go into bars. I mean, that, that should be a no-brainer, but don't go into bars. Don't hang out with your old friends that drink. When you get saved, if you want to walk with God, there are things that you're going to have to lay down. There are things you're going to have to give up. If you don't, you will never go any further than at that altar where you kneeled down and accepted Jesus as your, as your Savior. So that's one thing that, that we need to remember is James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you are going where the temptation is, you're not really resisting the devil. You're walking right onto his turf. And when you are on the devil's turf, he has a right to attack you. Because you're in his yard, he's not in your yard. So you have to remember that. You know, there are things that we have to do to get delivered. It's not, um, <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> it's not all for God to do for us. You know, he, he, he offers us salvation, and he gives us the authority over uh, all the works of the enemy. But we do have to do our part. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a glutton, it's uh, probably not a good idea if I go to, a lot to uh, all-you-can-eat buffets because I'm probably going to eat myself stupid in there. But that's just, you know, one example. Don't go where the sin is. Don't go where the sin is rampant. There are some things that you can't avoid. 
there are many things we can avoid. And especially earlier in our walk, uh, we'll try to, you know, kind of dance over by that fire and see how far we can push the envelope. You know, oh, well, you know, I kind of want to do that, so I'm just going to get really close to it, but I'm not going to do it. You'll end up doing it. Because when you dance with the devil, the devil don't change. The devil changes you. And it's very important that we obey that scripture to submit to what God wants to do in us and resist the devil. Resist him. Stay away from where uh, that sin abounds. Where, wherever you know you will be tempted, God sees you go into that place. You know, if you have a problem with pornography, he sees if you're going where there's pornography. He sees if you're turning on, you know, HBO or whatever the channels are that have that kind of thing at night. He sees that. Do you really think he's going to deliver you from that temptation when you're walking into it? He's not going to because you're not doing your part. So you need to do your part too. So here is the good news. If you do resist and if you do actually fight your flesh and stop giving into it, God will help you. And I don't care what your problem is, if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if it's porn, whatever it is, it makes no difference. The sin is sin. Um, but God will help you. He is faithful. His arm is not too short to save, and there is nothing that is too hard for Him. There's absolutely nothing that is impossible for God, and there's nothing that is too hard for Him. He will not lie, and He cannot fail. You can trust Him, but you have to do your part. So I just wanted to bring you that message that uh, we have a, a body and a uh, spirit and a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, and the body, you're just going to have to discipline the body. God takes care of the spirit when He saves you. When you make the decision. He takes care of the spirit. The spirit's reborn. The fleshly body, you know, the Bible says that you have to buffet your flesh, and you really do. You've got to be hard on it. You can't, you know, you can't let it get by with stuff because it'll just take over your life if you do. It'll just run your life for you because the flesh has its own set of desires, and they are in direct opposition to God and what God wants you to do. And the mind, will, and emotions, we get those renewed by the water of the word. They are washed clean by the water of the word. So that's where you want to go for help there. But um, leave your comments at the bottom. Anybody has a question, I'll try to answer it if I can. I don't claim to know everything because God knows for sure I don't know everything. But if I do know the answer, I will try to share it with you. And I hope everybody has a good night. Thanks for watching.